After my first year in college, I had an unusual summer job and it was a company hired me to drive a pickup truck from Los Angeles, California, this huge city where I'd grown up all the way across the United States to the state of North Carolina and to a very small city there where they needed the truck. So I found it an exciting adventure. And when I got there, I drove around and I looked and saw what it was like because I'd never been in the southern parts of the United States, in the south, before. And I, it, it was just a delight. And then in town, since I was a new Christian, I spotted a church where I could go to church the next morning. It was really painted brilliantly white and made out of wood. It had a steep roof and a steeple. And the next morning when I walked in, it had a center aisle and wooden pews on either side and a pulpit raised up and an organ. So I made myself uh, comfortable that midway down the aisle. Of course, I was wearing California casual jean skirt, probably nothing appropriate for that a southern lady would wear to church but what did i know and i looked around to see who was there and what kind of people and so i noticed in the very back a woman who looked differently than anyone else there and later that night i was so intrigued by her that i wrote a poem that i'd like to share with you and it goes like this there she was again second pew from the door, a back row Baptist. Hands, white gloved hands folded in prayer position. A pink pillbox hat perched on top shredded wheat hair. A tight lipped smile to match the A-line dress she wore that couldn't hide the God inside that small black body inside that big white church. Now I didn't have the opportunity to talk to this woman because when I turned around, I was distracted talking to someone else and I didn't have the opportunity to find out more about her and her life and why she was the only black person in that church. And I thought about it afterwards and I thought about how brave and courageous she was. And I thought of a scripture verse someone who could set aside any uh, discomfort at being with people who appear different than her. It's a great lesson to learn. And it reminded me that all of us are going through things that are so different than we've had to deal with before. It takes courage and bravery and fortitude to wake up each day and deal with life in the surge of COVID and during the pandemic. As a friend of mine, Reverend Dr. Charles Marx said, looking out through the window, it's a bleak view into the COVID landscape. It is indeed a bleak view but this is how we can be assured that we don't have anything to worry about. Because the prophet Isaiah is speaking to those who were caught up in captivity in Babylon, says, from eternity to eternity, I am God. No one can snatch anyone out of my hand no one can undo what I have done. Consider that we are kept in God's hand in the safety of God's palms. And we can't jump out. We can't fall out. No one could snatch us out of God's hands. And no one can undo what God has done. God in Jesus Christ has given his life for us so that we might be redeemed and transformed and we can respond to that great gift by loving others and bringing comfort to them because the prophet Isaiah also says, comfort, comfort my people, says the Lord. So glad that you joined me and thank you for being here with me on Spiritual Truck Talks. I hope you'll subscribe to my YouTube channel, Spiritual Truck Talks.